Hey, welcome in everybody to the newest edition of Jetpacks to the Bank, brought to you by True Philadelphian Sportscast. So I don't forget to say this. If you like what you're listening to, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. We're here to talk about the Phillies splitting a series with the New York Mets, those Metropolitans, the good old biscuit-loving Mets. Uh, so, um, Andrew, how you doing? I'm doing well. It's been a good day, you know. We got... Uh... Found a way to salvage the series and split split the series. We got um, fantasy drafts happening. Football's around the corner. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, and then with uh, moving back to baseball, uh, we were, we'll start with the elephant in the room. Um, Zach Wheeler did look a little bit off after having the fifth inning. Girardi said he walked somebody. Uh, and he didn't look as sharp getting through the sixth inning. But would you still have put him out there in the seventh inning at 83 pitches with 59 strikes out of those 83? Absolutely. I would have, without a doubt, put him back out there. Um, I think with it being an interesting week, you're going to see a couple, you're going to see this a couple times, and especially with the short games tomorrow and, and Thursday, Sunday. You're going to see him in those doubleheaders, too. I mean, this is the way Girardi manages. Like, it, it is what it is at this point. Um, again, we mentioned it before, he's similar to Kapler. Well, you're 37 games in. We're sitting here talking about him pulling a pitcher early. Um, but once again, I mean, how many times? I feel like we've talked about that in a lot of the losses already. Well, that's uh, been so, Girardi's Achilles I, heel his entire career. If you talk to Yankees fans, it's he sucks at managing a bullpen. Like, if you have a good bullpen, he'll be fine because you have a good bullpen. Well, but it's not that he's not, not a man the best bullpen. at managing it's the same as Kapler. He, he believes in the analytics in this sense, and he's not going to let him go out there a third, fourth time around the, that around the same lineup. Um, so that's what you're seeing here. Um, obviously, Wheeler is the best pitcher on this team the way he's pitching right now. Um, we have to give him the edge over Nola. Obviously, him and Nola are pretty close, but um, Wheeler looks better so far this year. So right now, you have to say he's the best best pitcher on the team currently, the way he's throwing, and I think. You ask any Philadelphia Phillies fan, they would rather Wheeler at um, 200 pitchers than anybody in that bullpen um, with the way he's thrown this year. So when he's at 83, I think uh, we'd all agree Wheeler should have been out there. Uh, So that was a mistake on Girardi's part once again uh, in terms of pulling him through early. And again, we know what the bullpen is at this point. We've seen 37 games of it. And um, it happened to come back and bite us once again. They come in, give up four runs. Yeah, it's two new guys giving up the runs, but... I mean, we all know Mia yeah, Ramirez looked good, but we know he's going to give up runs at some point. And then Phelps just hasn't hasn't uh, came in here and done well yet. He's given up three runs in two and two thirds of an inning uh, with this team already, so he's got things to work on. But at least Hunter Hunter looked good again. Workman lo- loses some control once again, and then Nares gives up a hit and a run, but the run comes to the extra inning rule. I, I feel uh, like Workman looked his best today, though. He had one walk, but he looked his best in my opinion. Yeah, it might have been his best, but I mean, I think he needs to cut down his walks. When it relievers, I'd rather see him give up a single than a walk, because you can, you got to come in and have control of your pitches. And he, he just continues to worry me in that sense, because well, Hector, he just doesn't seem like he can locate that well. <laughs> Hector gave up that single instead of a walk for you. <laughs> Still won, but well, yeah, but in a normal case, but walk. unfortunately now with the extra inning rule, yeah, he'd obviously rather a walk. But in a normal a normal game, if the rules were still the way they should be, um, Maris doesn't give up a run in that, didn't he? No, he did look uh, better because he finally had confidence in his fastball, where even when he was going good recently, it's still been more split, 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 yeah. where finally he had confidence. Like Ricky Batalga said, that don't fly. If you're doing that all the time, it's not going to work eventually. You're going to have like three straight games you get lit up. Because everyone's just going to, or if you're the Braves, <laughs> you just know how to hit Hector Nearest no matter what he does. So uh, you need to mix it up. And it's good to see that he had a life on his fastball and was hitting 95, 96 and actually had confidence in it. Where yeah. Workman, what I like today is his cutter looked a little bit better um, compared to his, some of his off speed stuff. So if he can get his off speed stuff more consistent with his cutter being good, that also would obviously help you against every left hander. So uh, that's what I kind of – I just look for him to build on that. And then Tommy Hunter's been very solid lately too. Now he's down to a 2A1 ERA. Um, he's a guy that obviously has peaks and valleys, but when he's at the peak the peak level, he usually is doing pretty good. What have you thought of how good he's been lately? 
Oh, he's been phenomenal. He's mixing his pitches well. He's able to locate really well. Um, I mean, listen, uh, you think you alluded to it multiple times on multiple of the podcasts we do, and, and that's uh, relievers have weird ERAs this year because they're not going to have as many innings and everything. And, and I think if you really look at the way Hunter's pitched, he's pitched fairly well for the most part. But, I mean, I think he gave up two or three runs. and uh, I think he gave up – I think he's only given up runs in two outings, if I think, if I remember correctly. And it just happens to be that both times there were more than a run each. So, yeah, at the times his ERA was spiking up a little bit. But um, he hasn't given up a run in eight, eight straight outings. He's pitched a scoreless. Um, so, knock on wood, hopefully that continues. Hopefully I didn't just jinx that. But, um, yeah, he, he's looked a lot better. He Last time he gave up a run was August 20th. Uh, in that outing, uh, and even he'll get, and that he's he's your typical reliever, in my opinion. Of he'll give up a hit usually, but he knows how to work around it. It kind of reminds me of Bradley, like in that sense. Like Lidge always came in and would give up a base runner, and then he knocked down the door. Yeah, and shut down. The door. Um, so I think Hunter, he, he's he. I think again, he's coming off an injury, so I think uh, I, I think he had to have a couple outings to feel comfortable again, get his rhythm back. And I think now you're seeing that finally from him. And I expect him to be a huge, huge piece down the stretch here uh, when you're fighting for that playoff spot and uh, possibly World Series title, especially especially in a week like this when you have to rely on guys going back-to-back nights. And, I mean, let's face it, you you got three doubleheaders this week. You might need a reliever to go twice in one day. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, though, even though uh, moving on to a different reliever, Romero struggled today. What I did like is he never seemed to get scared. Like, sometimes young pitchers, when they start giving up stuff, then all of a sudden walk everyone left and right. He still had no walks in that inning. And then he gave up the other hit, and then Girardi pulled him. So it's not a good outing, but it does look good for your bounce-back uh, chances because he seems like a guy that doesn't get phased. And obviously, in a reliever, you would like a guy that doesn't get phased, unlike Nick Pavetto's. Uh, so, thankfully, in Boston, it hasn't pitched yet, I don't think. So, um, like that's a very good sign to see that he doesn't get phased by that. I think that's a good sign. I don't know if you agree with that moving forward as a bounce-back mindset. No, I agree with that. It's something you need to have. Um in terms, of, especially in MLB, because you're going to have those outings that get a little shaky or something like that. I think it's important to realize with him, too, in today's outing, you had a possible chance to get out of that inning, but you throw the ball away. Uh, defenses looked horrendous. I think we got to give them a shout-out, or not a shout-out, get, get on them a little bit. Um, Hazley was a mess yesterday. Today, you have Garlic misread, <laughs> misread read a ball, where if Harper's probably in right field, that ball's probably caught, and we're looking at a different line for Wheeler. Um, but again, Romero got the ground ball you needed. Whether they would have had the guy, it was pretty close. I don't think they would have had him, but still, the ball gets thrown away. Um, one, if if you don't think you can get him, you got to eat that. But uh, instead, Gregorius throws it away, and a run scores from there. So honestly, I don't know why. I thought the one run should have been unearned at least. Um, so I don't know why both those runs were earned because the one scored on the on the Gregorius throwing error. So I was surprised to see both those get charged to him for earned runs. I guess it was because the next hitter was a home run. Um, so I guess. If he would have scored anyway, I guess was the ruling. Um, but I think it's a, it was a tough day for Romero, but he's looked good for the most part. And, and we all know people, players are going to have shaky outings. I think yeah. he'll bounce back fine. Uh, and they'll need him to bounce back uh, bounce back pretty quick because, again, uh, you're going to need everybody, everybody, everyone, all hands on deck this week. Yeah, the good thing is, well, it might not be a good thing, like Ricky Bo said. It might be better to actually have played – like he said, a couple of the double headers, and then next Tuesday you had an off day, <laughs> so it was kind of everything was all the craziness was kind of double 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 header, like in a few days span, having two double headers was over and done with, and then, or three actually, I think. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> got next week. Yeah, we got tomorrow, we got Thursday, and we got Sunday are all double headers. Yeah. So, like, it would have been a little bit better probably, like you said, to have an off day next two days. You just got all this crap over with. And then be like, okay, cool, now I can rest for one day uh, rather than resting beforehand when you have just Boston. Uh, but that's the way it is. So they're going to have to uh, match it for matchups there and figure things out. And this is going to be the ultimate test for Girardi because we talk about Girardi, how a lot of us get on him for taking guys out well. <laughs> If you're playing that many games in consecutive days, 
this is going to be the ultimate test for him with the overall fan base of how they like how he manages pitching. Because if you start taking guys out in the fifth inning just because you have a doubleheader, meanwhile they have 75 pitches and have looked really good, people are going to be like, well, if we lose this game, I am going. <laughs> like, um, so, like, you need to be able to – you look at both sides of the equation there. Cause like Ricky Bo said, he kind of was going off of what I said on chasing the pen. It, uh, if you have starters that just look really good, then you don't even have to worry about anything in seven, eight double header. Ideally. Cause if you have two starters that just go, oh, I have 80 pitches in the seventh inning. You're like, Oh, perfect. Uh, what like, uh, hopefully that, ha- I don't see that happening with all our stars. Cause if Jake Arrieta does that, I'll do a backflip. But, um, <laughs> Other than him, uh, the you could have guys that actually normally get into innings. Like if Eflin has a good start, normally he pitches at least five and two thirds or six innings. So you figure yeah. if he pitches six or innings and has eighty five pitches and he looked really good, and the only reason he has eighty five pitches is because he like walked two people in the first inning or the second, then you could put him back in for that seventh inning. So that's what I'm saying. I, I would say with this bullpen, you have to not be stupid. And say, we're saving the starting rotations arms. It's like, that's a good idea in principle, but it's not with this bullpen. <laughs> I would agree with you, but to my point, what I said on Chase and the Penny yesterday as well is he did what I said today. I mean, he pulled him at 83. Um, I, I, that's just the way he manages. I, I don't think he's going to go into this week any different. He, he's he's going to judge it on how they're looking. And he will if he lose two to Boston. <laughs> I mean, we better not lose two to Boston, but uh, no, nah, yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting to see, and we'll no. we'll jump on here tomorrow night or Wednesday, uh, whatever one to recap the, the the two Red Sox games. But it'll be interesting to see how he mans that doubleheader tomorrow. Yeah, but that's the because the the way to lose to Boston is not managing your pitching well because they still have guys that can hit a little bit, so that's the one way you can easily lose to Boston because our pitching blows. So if you also just for some reason don't manage your pitching well, then that's the one way you can lose to Boston. Yeah, my my agree. Well, granted, also Martin Perez, who actually somehow has looked half decent this year. Um, so good for him. Um, is pitching tomorrow. So I hope that's not one of those guys that just randomly is like, yeah, you know what, guys, I'm the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> and then pitches like seven shutout innings, and we're just like, how in God's creation. Um, so uh, hopefully the Phillies are able to actually hit guys that are lower throwing pitchers that are more finesse than stuff, uh, which we don't always have the keenest success on. Um, and I'm assuming the other guy that pitches for Boston is going to be more finesse than stuff too, because I don't know who else they would – like, they only have a couple options out of the guys that already pitched already this week. It's not going to be, okay, you just pitched two days ago, but uh, we need you to pitch again. Like, okay. Um, yeah, I know we're going Eflin game one, Velasquez game two. Yeah, which makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Ugh. Obviously, that was sarcasm. That uh, sounds to be determined. Yeah. Uh, Eflin I like. That was, not a, that was not a shot of Zach Eflin at all. That was a shot entirely at Vince Velasquez. Um, <laughs> Zach Eflin is one of my favorite pitchers to watch on the team because he's kind of the Tommy Hunter of the staff. It's like, just give me the damn ball and I'll go six in it. Like, okay, cool, perfect. That makes my life a lot easier. Um, so, like, he's like a manager's dream as your fourth or five guy. He just takes the ball and gives you inning. Where that's what uh, you hope. Jake Arrieta can at least become and kind of do what he did in the Mets game rather than give up seven runs. Uh, otherwise, there's no chance he's pitching third game if we make, when we make the postseason. So, um, But other than the last game of the series, uh, before we go into the guys that were clearly the keys of this game, who do you think uh, stepped up and kind of put themselves in a good light going into playing all these games in this series to be able to move on and have a, a – that's not Andrew Knapp since he just keeps hitting 460. But um, anyone that's not Andrew Knapp that just keeps putting themselves in a good light and is going to continue to have success um, in the future because they got it going in this series. That's Gene Segura. I, I, he continues to, to come out of his slump, and he's hitting the ball better. He's playing better defense. 
I think people need to give him a lot more credit than he, he's gotten to this to the standpoint. I, I feel like he, he's gotten a bad rap for whatever reason. I mean, his slow start was no different than anyone else's slow start on the team. And uh, for some reason, Segura continues to get ripped on. Uh, but I, I think he, he deserves more credit where credit's due. He goes four for five today. You don't win that game without him. Um, he's brought his average up to a respectable average compared to everyone else on the team. So I think he's really turned the corner as well. I mean, I think uh, he's putting himself in a good spot to, to continue to trust, and I like the way he's starting to hit the ball. Uh, I'd say I'd say Gene Segura. Yeah, mine for me, uh, because he finally was – well, he did a couple other good things in this series, but uh, the fact that JT was finally able to really put a good swing on one – was very nice to see since obviously he hasn't been playing like the same exact JT Romuto the past four games. He's been playing well, but it hasn't been like he started to start the season. So I think that swing, especially because you hit it the other way in City Field, it's not like that's a joke park to hit a home run the other way. Um, I think he is going to get going again from that, and you're going to see him kind of get back to where he was at the beginning and have a hot close out here. So I think that's really going to help him because Segura was the obvious choice. So obviously I didn't want to also pick him. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people can rip on him all they want. I mean, but he's got a higher average than McCutcheon. Now he's got a higher average than Hoskins. He's got a higher average. Or he's right there with JT. Um, he's right there with uh, Dita Gregorius. Um, and then he's got a higher average than uh, Adam Hazel as well. Uh, so, I mean, Hey, Segura's turned into one of the better He's really turned it around. I think he deserves more credit than, than he's given. Um, and we'll see what 280 happens. in his last seven games and 293 in his last 15 games, according to MLB's app. So, yeah, okay. he's been uh, hitting I, better. I will uh, say another good moment here for, for another good uh, momentum shift for the team as a whole and the young rookie was Alec Bohm. I mean, a pivotal part in this game was right after the Mets took the lead 7-6, to six, and you saw the rookie get up there in a huge situation with two outs, running off first and second, and he goes the other way with the ball. I mean, this guy continues. Just, I know he only goes one for five today, but that one hit was huge. If he doesn't get that hit, you don't uh, go into extras and win the game. Um, so this, 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 guy, this young guy does not seem phased by any situations. He's come up with multiple cl- uh, clutch hits. I think that's his third Third one already in this young season, a young career for him. So I think that continues to continues yeah. to impress me, and um, not so much because he was struggling, but just a good momentum continuation for for Bohm, um as a rookie. I think he's another guy that can take take that hit and and go into this week with a, a big bang. Yeah, another guy I would like to see finally have a have a, a Neil Walker s game at some point is the guy you said Mitch Judge the ball in right field. Kyle Garlick, because he has power, so he's supposed to be a half-decent pinch hitter against lefties. The problem is he hasn't done anything yet. So, um, I would like to see him have one of those games like Neil Walker that he had gets three hits, and then maybe that kind of locks him in a little bit more. So, because he needs to, otherwise he's going to get replaced by somebody on the taxi squad, because I don't think you're going to keep a guy that's hitting 111 that doesn't feel that well either and only has a good arm. He's not the best fielder. He has a good arm, but that's not yeah. that helpful if you can't run a good route to the ball to throw at the home plate. So, um, but anyway, yeah, you're right. Hazley, since coming back, has been cold. He's got to get going. Uh, granted, he's probably going to get playing time again if Kyle Garla can't figure out how to hit, because uh, then that means neither of them can figure out how to hit. But Hazley, because of being the younger will probably get more play in time. And then Andrew Knapp. Andrew Knapp takes two walks. Uh, didn't register in that bat. Still hitting a cool 462 on the season uh, with a 1.268 <laughs> OPS. Dang. <laughs> in 26 at-bats with one home run and six RBI. So like Joe Girardi said, when he's in the lineup, he's – I think he might have called him our best hitter. I don't even know if he said one of our best hitters. I thought I heard T-Max say one of our best hitters, but then at the same time, I swear I saw heard him say our best hitter. Either <laughs> either way, Joe Girardi thinks very highly of Andrew Knapp. Let's just put it like that, uh, which is great because obviously Gabe Kapler just put him in and didn't teach him anything. <laughs> or, or it was our hitting coach that didn't teach him anything. <laughs> Where now he, he seems – well, one, he seems better. He seems even better defensively when he's already really good at that. And then two – 
Uh, obviously, he's 50 times better at home plate. So Joe Dillon figured out something there because uh, the dude's hitting like a second round pick all of a sudden, which he was. And he was a guy that was projected to project. Now, not Matt Glentick, I swear to God, if you don't sign JT Romuto because of it. But he was projected to be a starter at a certain point. Now, that's not me saying that Matt Glentak should be like, yeah, we have Andrew Knapp now, so we don't need you. No. You should keep <laughs> – you need to re-sign JT Real Muto and then have Andrew Knapp being – hopefully continuing to be the best backup in baseball so then JT Real Muto doesn't need to be on his legs 50 million times a year. So, like, that's a very good situation to have. Uh, so I really like the fact that they got him going – and the way that he's swinging um, the bat, like when you watch him and how like just confident he looks and everything, I don't know if it's a fluke. Like it seems like he finally just figured out how to balance his swing and kind of keep it leveled and kind of just not swing out of his shoes like he used to do and just kind of keep it relaxed, leveled, and collected. Where if he figured that out, obviously he's a great fielder and he's fast. Like we have two catchers that are fast. Um, so other than today when that bit him in the ass, but you know, it happens sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> the, um, so, uh, the, he, uh, it's really nice to see him go. And I figured since we knock him down at times in past years, we might as well build him all the way up, uh, this year with how good he's doing. <laughs> so figured that would be a good closing point. Do you have any closing points? I just say you got to step up the defense. I think the defense was, has been, pretty bad lately these last few games and it's a huge detrimental when when you don't have the pitching um that can you can't pitch around those mistakes you have to go out there and play uh, field well it cost you a game yesterday uh cost you a game saturday and it almost cost you a game today as well um i know because the other way i said on ctp a week ago about today is i thought the defense was looking good but the defense wasn't there this week and i don't know if it I know it's a long season or whatever, but they got to get their heads straight again and, and get back ready to go because um, yeah. you can't afford these mistakes. And in three days from now, you're going seven games against the Marlins in yeah. four days. You got to be ready to play, and that, that's going to make or break your season right there. That's what I was going to say. If you play so much consecutively, obviously you're going to be tired at the plate. But if you're dead, the the, the most likely place you're going to make a huge mistake because you're either just going to strike out at the plate or somehow get it. It's not like you're going to look like a complete doofus. Uh, would be, well, you might if you're Bartolo Colon, but uh, would be in the outfield or in the infield because if you're just gassed and you still have to play, if your range is not going to be as good. Like, that's just, so, I'm not making excuses. It's more just something that popped in my head with how rigorous this season is. It's kind of like, Nobody ever plays this many games in a 100. I think it's like, like in a, like 168 hours worth of baseball or something. The Fransky and LA thing said in like the next like 10 to 12 calendar days, <laughs> like, yeah. like, like on average. Uh, so like the or maybe it was innings, but whatever it is, like the the thing, like. There's just so much going on in this season with so much worse. Like, I just know from watching MLB TV, you see mistakes galore, it seems, this year compared to past years in the field. And it's on guys, like we mentioned, that normally never have issues in the field. Now, Anthony Rizzo's yesterday was, I mean, it was there, there was like a windstorm coming through Chicago. So that doesn't count. But the like other plays where the ball didn't f- get into a freaking – time warp and somehow end up all the way over there when it was all the way over here. Um, <laughs> that's uh, Those are the things I'm talking about. So I just figured, I just thought that. But I agree, our defense needs to get better, but that's something that popped in my head when I started thinking of defense yeah. this season. As you can tell in series, in the NHL, the reason I thought of that is sometimes teams at the end of a seven-game series just like... <sighs> Like they're like just like please please end this game please end this game. like like you can tell there's like games that like everyone's playing their heart out because they just want to end it and it's like they're about to do a Keith Primo and just be like thank you like what like, <laughs> so that's how I feel some of these baseball guys are getting with these consecutive games that's why I feel like that eats away on you on defense sometimes more than offense because offense you just kind of have to click it in. And while you're at bat defense, you have to click it in the entire time you're in the field. 
So, but I agree with you. We need the defense to get going. That was just an observation I felt like laying out. Do you have any other final thoughts? No, I have my final thought. Um, all right. Well, we split a series with the Mets. Is Tyrone Johnson, who, if you don't listen to him, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Uh, but anyway, as Tyrone Johnson said, who you should follow on Twitter, um, the Phillies for – you had to expect them to go a little colder than 10 of 11. You're probably not going to win 10 of 11 for the rest of the season. That would be ridiculous. But you're probably not going to do that unless you're the Dodgers. So the that's uh, it's great to see us split the series, especially after these last two games and getting beat 14 to 1, to bounce back and score six. And then, of course, our pitching blew up. But we, came, we bounced back and scored six immediately. And then we're able to get the other three, of course, to put us over the top. And we needed every one of them winning 9 to 8. But everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Enjoy the baseball, and let's keep carrying this momentum into the Red Sox doubleheader, which, by the way, we should sweep. But I'll take one game, but we should sweep. So have a great, safe, and pleasant night, everybody. This is Jeff Pax of the Bank. For Andrew, I am Joe. You can follow us at True underscore Philly Sport on Twitter. Peace out, everybody.